we go. Podcast SEO marketing. What makes your show stand out? Thank you for joining and thank you for being here in the marketing club. Marketing club, sorry. <laughs> I mean, we do a lot of marking, right? We use highlighters, we talk about things, we mark our pens, we mark our words, we mark what we say, but we also check the market. You know, we we have a, like a litmus test of what the market feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like, and what it's supposed to be like. Because there comes a time when you have to, as a business, understand what you are really getting yourself into. Because podcasting is not just a cookie cutter for everybody to just, you know, click on, boom, 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 and we're here and, and yay. Okay, that that's fine. That's totally fair. And what we do is SEO, which is completely different because we deal with search engines and not social media only and not social media. So there's a big difference. And I think a lot of people have to understand there's a difference between oh, my marketing is being done for me and I have social media being done. That's great. That is what we need. 100%, let's do it. That, yes, I'm all in agreement. But when you start to look at social media and you place it on the same pedestal with SEO, you're, you're really making a big mistake. You're really making a huge blunder because you're technically telling yourself that I don't need to scale my business. I don't need to improve on my business. I don't need to make sure my business has any understanding because people can put social media and because it's on TikTok. No, it doesn't work like that. It's because it's on threads. It doesn't work like that because you're doing SEO on threads, because you're doing SEO on Instagram. Those are all great things. What if the algorithm changes? Then what? So you have to think about SEO from your house from your property, like, you know what your house looks like. I don't, right? So you know where the knives are, you know where the bread is, you know where the butter is, you know where the eggs are, right? You know where the pans are, you know where the couch is, you know, you know those things because it's within your element of surrounding, right? It's It stands out to you because you can see it, right? So when you have social media, that's what people are seeing, right? <laughs> so the, you said funny because I don't know what my house looks like. Good morning. What you mean you don't know what your house looks like? <laughs> so I have a condition that makes it so my brain doesn't store memories of buildings. So I have no idea what my house looks like. I just have to find it by the address. So wow, yeah, I just thought that was That's funny. That's interesting. Yeah, buildings and faces. I can remember other things, but not buildings and faces. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. You see, this, you see, I, I love examples like this because I want us to open up and connect and build something that is just beyond the ordinary. You know, it's about standing out. It's about, you know, making something that you can see be seen. And if you can see it even more, you can actualize it, right? There's so many things that you're looking out for. So many, so many, so many things. How do you stand out? Like, what are you doing that's making you stand out? Are you connecting with other people? You know, are your colors standing out on your podcast? Are you using the same colors everyone is using in your field? Because when you look at the fields of study, welcome Austin and David, good to have you all here. You have to look at your business like a business, right? I was just talking to a real estate uh, agent and she she's amazing, full of integrity, amazing woman. She's just amazing. and. She's been told over and over that, hey, she can be, you know, she can help a lot more people than the people that she's helping. She helped me as well. So I said, okay, if if you are helping people, you know, secure homes, secure housing and, you know, safe neighborhoods near good schools, you know, why can't I help and help you with that research? So we did some research today. She gave me some zip codes and we looked at those zip codes and we saw that there's an LA Fitness and a Kroger 
right next to each other. So when somebody goes to the gym, the next thing is they might want to go grab some food or get some groceries before they go back home, right? So within that zip code, you've already connected with people from the gym to the store, the grocery store. And somebody wants to learn about real estate or really try to buy their home, sell their home, because at that point they're downsizing. So there's so many things we looked into. And I was like, if you don't have a website, because I told her, you're on realtor.com, you're on hr.com, you're on homes, you're, hev you're everywhere. Like you cannot be missed and you have great reviews. Like you're a great person to work with and anyone I would recommend, if you're looking for a home, I would recommend them to you, right? Even if it's an apartment, at least get your residential address sorted out. That's, I would send her your way, right? And of course, everyone can say that for themselves because everyone has their own experience. But what makes you stand out? We can all bake a cake, we can all fry eggs, we can all boil eggs, we can all, you know, make rice, we can all, you know, we can all do the same thing. So we're all unique, but we can all do the same thing too, right? And how you do it makes you stand out because of the eye, the precision, the focus, the zeal, the passion, the element, the skill, the experience, those are the things that are going to make you stand out. Right. So I told her, hey, if we just run as to these three blocks and we're connecting with about 15,000 people a week and you only need to sell maybe one or two homes that costs over, you know, 700,000, then we can instead of you spending time on three homes, we can spend time on one home and get the one percent of, you know, the people that we're connecting with. So I just did the math and she's like, it makes sense. Like, why not just spend a good amount here, a good maybe $1,000 here, and that one home you sell, you get your 3 to 5% back because you were focused on the target. We did literally analysis. Do they have kids? Do they, are they renting? Is it, is there wages? Is it capital gains? Like we went so deep into audience that before we even got to the billboard, I already knew who her, her audience is because she's, she's not trying to sell homes to everybody or help people get homes. Yeah, everyone can do it. But what's going to make her stand out is that if I'm at Kroger and I see you on my screen, every time I'm at the gym, every time I'm at, I'm at Kroger, I'm seeing your face there every day for the whole month. At some point, I'm going to have to figure out like, okay, I really want to know what this person is doing. Right. And then you take a screenshot. There's a QR code. You're not on the road because people think billboards are just on the road. Billboards are literally at the gas station, billboards, anything digital that has an, a display, like an LED is digital. So that's digital billboard. So I wanna, if I say billboard, don't just think the ones on the road that with the signpost, think about digital, like audio video. Like you can actually hear someone speaking to you through your, you know, you put a ton, <laughs> put your gas on and you start putting gas in and then your, you, this, the pump starts making noise. Hey, you there, turn around. Look at me. I have something for you. Da, 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 da. Before you know it, that person has felt like you actually grabbed their attention because how long does it take to pump gas, right? If you really do the math and you think about the time it takes for someone to hear you, remember you, and execute on what you say is a very short time because people can, in a snap of a finger, forget everything you've said because something else of priority is going to pay attention to what they're going to pay attention to. So how are you going to stand out consistently is a question. And we're going to answer that question today. It's 11-11. I'm always saying 11-11 for some reason. It's been happening consistently, but I'm going to pass it to you so that I would love to hear your thoughts on the topic and welcome Austin. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I really like this analogy of the house um, or also with the, the faces. Cause yeah, like for me as someone with, um, with, with my condition, like, and when, when you were thinking about consistently, like I could remember people by their hair. I could remember people by the way they walk. I could remember people by the way they dress, just not their face. And then if, if they change something, if they like change their hair, then suddenly I'm not going to recognize them and I'm going to avoid them if I see them because I'm like, I don't know this person. And so I'm thinking of that with like my podcast when I do go a different direction and then, you know, then it's not as recognizable. So yeah, a lot to think about. 
are so right. You are so right about that. You, you're spot on because people are going to remember, like, imagine you have a billboard and it just says, Hey, listen to my podcast on Apple, on Spotify. What they're going to remember is not even the name. I mean, the name, yes, they have to remember what they're looking at. Right. But I think what's going to make them remember you is one, the color and two, the message, because if you have a podcast episode and you have a show and you have an episode, you're talking about something specific, what's going to make me click. If I have, for example, SEO for real estate owners, right? Part one, part two, part one is 15 minutes. Part two is 30 minutes. Why would I get more attention on part two than on part one? Because people want to know how the end of a movie is. They want to know the end of the story. They want to know the final. They want to go to the end of the book, right? Part one, they can listen to it, right? It's great. And it's also subjective because people like, for example, Lion King, like people will watch Lion King one before Lion King two, right? And you look at the impact it's created on childhood, on lifestyle, on everything, right? There's so much impact there. Right. So you can see those two things that are playing a part. So which one is better? Right. Avatar one, avatar two. Right. Which one did better? So when you start looking at the, the numbers and you start seeing that the compound value, it's better because the compound value is better than the one number. If I just have one number. OK, great. You know, there was no sequel. There was no series. You know why we love Star Wars so much is because there's a series, right? Why we love Game of Thrones is because it's a series. Even if it's a movie, the movie has impact because there's something within it. So if you look at your episodes, your show, your titles, how you describe things, do you start off with question marks or do you start off with statistics? Do you start off with statements? Do you start off with cliffhangers? What do you do when somebody has no clue about what you do, but has so many attention spans springing everywhere and you need to attend to this one person at this one minute so that's why they call it an elevator pitch because you don't know what you're going to get but whatever you give and how you receive it back is how you lay the table if you present something to me and it looks good on a plate i'm gonna eat it if i look at the plate and the plate is not presentable my mind is not going to feel excited to eat the food as though if you really put it together and it was you know it was had some tlc in it you somebody will see it differently so presentation is key it's major 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 key so that's going to make you stand out as well so i'd love that you said that so that welcome liverpool austin what are your thoughts on the topic and you're giving me eyes too so i need to know what you're thinking <laughs> hey favor and uh morning sona and liverpool uh, I forget what the eyes was. It was it was reacting to just a one comment that you said that I thought was funny. Uh, before you pass it over to Soda, but yeah, happy to be here. Great topic. School's in session for me. I'm still you know very early stage of podcasting and been learning SEO through you. So just wanted to come on the stage and support. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. Love that. Thanks for joining. Liverpool, what's going down? Hi, Faber. Good afternoon from my side of the world. I hope you are having some decent weather because over here um, that we've had some brilliant sunshine over the last couple of days, which is kind of strange considering that we are coming into autumn and everything like that so and the weather getting a little bit colder but yeah um i really just came up to show some support because obviously um as you know um podcasting is something that um has been on the back burner but i've not actually started it yet and everything like that so yeah, so I've just been here just to really show some support and looking to kind of learn and hopefully, hopefully that podcast that I'm really striving to do will eventually get itself out there because one thing about me, right, is um, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist as well, so I feel like um, it has to be at the 
the right time for me um, and obviously I have quite a lot of things juggling at the moment as well so some things just really get put on the back burner and of course a little bit of procrastination as well which is not really a great thing which is something I definitely would definitely say that I struggle with from time to time so I'm sure we've all been there at one point in our lives so yeah that's it from me favour. Nah, I appreciate you for for letting us know that. I didn't even know you had been thinking about podcasting because you having a podcast would be so good for the things that you talk about because you're a reader, just from what I've seen. You know, you're an avid reader. You love books. You love storytelling. You love how to connect stories and experiences based on what you've had. So someone hearing your podcast for 5 to 15 minutes a day or a week is is gold. You know, and a lot of people want to hear your story. A lot of people want to know more about you. It's not just about like what you do, what you've signed up for, all those things, but it's what you're leaving behind, you know, and there's no other way. I just see it like there is no other way for someone to leave anything behind out of these three things, text, audio, video, text, audio, video. You got to be in one of them or all three or a hybrid of two. Because if you can create content that people can read on a website that you feed, that you control, that you qualify, that you build, it's going to be so great. Like, so, so great. Like, I was just celebrating with a client yesterday. She just won, she's won three grants like grants up to about 60 grand and she's won them in her city. Like in her city, she actually got the, like, you know, on Fox news, how they celebrate. Yeah. It's on YouTube. And she said, it. she said it yesterday. I was like, what, what, what? I was so, so excited for her. So I got on a call with her this morning at 7 AM because I was like, okay, she wants to start teaching other women because she has her own store. She has a product store. She sells, you know, really good products, you know, and these products allow people to feel comfortable in their hoodies. And she also does them as well. She also does like hijabs as well for, for people to actually be in their power because that's how she's connecting with her community. Right. And she came to me last year and we talked and we built it out from there. Now we, we're switching up some systems right now. And in between that, I said, oh, hey, let's connect your SEO because if Fox News is picking you guys up, if you're getting grants from these companies, from these places, they're going to put your website there, right? And for you to even get a grant, you need to have a website. You need to, for you to get a loan, you need to have a business account. Like you have to be business ready. Yeah, grants are great, but if you're not ready for the grants, how are you going to be great at it if you're not ready for it? So those things have been able to allow her to get to those amounts, right? She's getting those grants and I'm telling her, okay, if you want to teach other people how to do this thing, then we need to set it up in a way that you create something called a front end offer. It's like, what is that? Or like a front end offer is like you buy a concert ticket. That's a front end offer because you haven't experienced a ticket. You haven't experienced the, the event yet, but you've purchased your ticket, a flight. I just bought a flight ticket right now because I'm flying out. I've been flying back to back, but another ticket. So I'm flying out next month that I'm probably flying twice next month. That's the, the two I know. It might be more, but two are confirmed now. And I'm using a platform. I'm, I'm going to give you guys some, put y'all on some game. It's called Skip Lagged. Go to skiplagged.com, S-K-I-P-L-A-G-G-E-D.com. And you can really save your money on flights. Like you don't have to pay thousands of dollars for flights that you could save 50% and more. Like it's, it's crazy. I don't even want to go too deep into that. But if you want to spend money, save money and be free, like be just flexible, right? You got to know these things. I do research, so I'm telling you all this so that when you hear this episode, yeah, it's talking about podcast SEO marketing, but you also learn a few things, right? You hear a few stories. So this morning I was able to connect with the our client and I, I was able to help her and set up her, her events. So now she's actually doing a workshop for, for women who want to learn how to, even men too, if they're well, they're welcome, but primarily her audience are women. And she wants to help other women who are doing business like she's doing, 
to be able to get out of their nine to five. She's a full-time entrepreneur. She just re retired as a nurse. <laughs> so she's like full on with her family, taking care of her family, focusing on her business. She ships out to London, to Abu Dhabi, to, you know, all over the US. Like she's doing her thing. Like, I'm just like so proud of her. I just came in to do the SEO so I can't get all the credit. I'm just here to help support, compliment, help you raise, you know, we rise by lifting others, right? So you just help other people as you go. So this took about six to nine months because the SEO just didn't kick in. Like we kicked this off last year and towards the end of this last year around this time, that's when, you know, things started picking up. And then now she's winning all these grants. She's showing up on Fox News. Now she's like, what do I do? So I told her, you know what? Let's create workshops. Create a front end offer. If you're buying a flight ticket, like I just did, you pay it in front. You've not experienced a flight yet, right? But you've, you've paid for it. So a workshop means if I have a workshop coming on an X date, and I'm planning to, before the end of this room, I'm going to give you guys a link to the workshop to, to purchase because I'm starting to do workshops. I did it last month. No, not last month, in July. And I said, I'm going to do it more and more often, but I've been just, I've been flying and I want to give you guys my undivided attention. So I'm looking for the perfect date to set it. But before this room is closed, you're going to get a link at the top if you want to start registering for it in advance. And there are going to be two options that you can choose from. And why I'm doing this is because I've been spending time on Clubhouse a lot. And that has allowed me to connect with people on LinkedIn. Um, today, I'm actually getting paid by HoneyBook. They're interviewing me for an hour, asking me questions on, on some survey. It's like a private com you know, conversation. And HoneyBook is going to pay me after that call. So they send me an email. Flowdesk is going to pay me for an article I'm going to be writing for them by October 4th. So I I'm here telling you. Dude, favor. You're like a professional paid influencer now, officially, right? I didn't right? think that was a thing, honestly. I've never called myself that before. <laughs> so this is happening in real time. And I'm like, wow, is this happening? Yeah, bro, it's, it's really happening. And I'm so thankful and grateful that it's not just like SEO. It's, it's impact. It's people. It's communities. And... These are things that I'm like, wow, you know, it's just a simple post, 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 you know, SEO, SEO, SEO. It sounds like it's like a, a broken record, but eventually it's going to tick. So I'm like, I can't be on Clubhouse talking like this for this long and you guys need to see it visually. So why not bring you to my world and create workshops? So I'm going to be doing a workshop on, you know, creating a podcast schedule. And it's not just, oh, here's a schedule. It's what is in the schedule as far as keywords as far as length, as far as depth, as far as, you know, taglines, as far as the SEO piece, like where are you even distributing these platforms to? Because in that workshop, I'll be telling you, here are the podcast stations that your podcast should be on. If you're not on this station, you're not in this market. It's as simple as that. Right now, doing billboards, digital billboards for clients in grocery stores and gas stations and malls and offices and by, you know, skyscrapers. It's crazy. It's Times Square, now it's easy to be on Times Square. I was like, how'd you get on Times Square? Now I can do that. Because I had to dig in the research to figure out like, what is, I mean, it can't be that hard. There has to be some formula somewhere. And then bingo, I found it. So it's based on research and I'm still researching. The more I know, the more I don't know. So it keeps me grounded, right? Because I'm always showing up, helping, showing this, showing that this is what you do, this is what you don't do. I mean, I'm also not perfect, so I can't really be right at everything. But what I'm right at, I'm able to at least justify with evidence. And then I'm able to, you know, compare, contrast, see, okay, what can we work with? What can we leave behind? It just helps the process. So it's a big thing to look at because if you're not just doing it, you you have to do it based on the words that you say. You know, Liverpool's Finance is saying, um, have we spoken about the use of colors and the importance of descriptions? Not yet. Descriptions, probably yes. I'm not sure about the colors, but yeah, descriptions, I touched on it, but not in its entirety. But I will touch on those two because I talked about the color and the psychology of color, especially when you're looking at your content, right? And the descriptions, because when you have an episode and this episode is 30 minutes long, it means that this episode has chapters. And if these chapters are not titled or subtitled, then the descriptive text misses the whole point. I mean, 
we have descriptive text. Descriptive text, right, is for descriptions. It's for describing. It's to describe the text, right? So if you're not describing the context of the information that you're showing on video or audio, why are you leaving that big old 4,000 character space blank? It's real estate. It's like, a, it's, it's HTML. It's hypertext markup language. That's why when I look at people that post, post videos, post podcasts, and then they just put one line, two lines. I'm like, y'all, it's like, it's literally like building your house and then forgetting to put the windows or forgetting to put a cabinet. Like there are things that you have to have. And it's there available to you. The space is there, but you don't want to build on it. You don't want to do a Sims move. You know, you know, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to do Monopoly and say, okay, I'm going to build a house here, put rent here. Da, 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 da. You're not doing that because you're not seeing the potential in that box. That box looks blank and it's blank because it needs to be filled in. And if it's not filled in or filled up, then guess what your competitor is and other people are using emojis, using contacts, using connecting me on LinkedIn, putting the actual Facebook words there, putting anchor text, putting question marks, putting takeaways, putting hashtags. Like there's so much you can do with that text box, but people leave it blank. And not everyone leaves it blank. They put something on it, but even what you're putting on it, is it substantial enough to competitively be at an advantage for you to actually cross over the threshold? That's a big question. Liverpool, do you have something to say? Yes, I do. It's very good that you brought up about the psychology of colours and everything like that, because that was just what I was just about to speak, um, talk about, because I think it's very, very important, especially when it comes to, I know you're talking about it with in your, in your podcast, but I was more thinking about you know, when you're doing the marketing side of your podcast as well. So I know you were talking in um a few previous rooms as well about billboards and things like that and posters and, and everything like that. Colours are very important because it really affects people's mood and they're also their bio behaviour and it also gives a an idea of what the podcast is going to be about because there's different colors that resemble different things such as red could mean could mean love to some people blue could mean peace and it just gives you a little bit of um an idea of what that what the podcast is going to be about and also about as well because obviously as well um, it's very important to also use standout colours, so contrasting colours, so something that is not bland, it's exciting and everything like that. If you think about a movie poster that's about to drop now, they're going to use really exciting colours that will stick in the mind of people and are going to people to remember what your podcast is going to be because if you think about it, the human mind is um, exposed to hundreds and thousands of information every single day. And what our mind, whether we know it or not, um, is sometimes we, because we are so bombarded with so much information that we just kind of skip over things. And so it's very important that um, when we're doing our marketing that we actually try and, you know, try and make sure that we leave an impact with somebody you know when it comes to our, when it comes to our marketing as well and so yeah that's very very important so it was a good good thing that you kind of brought that up maybe so yeah that's it from me thank you it's true colors make the world go around we've heard this before <laughs> Top of girls. <laughs> I just saw soda and I was just thinking about that. It just literally flashed through my mind when I said colors. But you know, it's this things that we think about back then and we're like, huh, I mean, yeah, it, you know, we have to tap back into those creativity pockets that we tend to skip over because yeah, we're adults now, we're too grown for school, but yada yada. But at the same time, it's like, hey, we're still god's children we're still kids we're still babies we're still we're not 200 years old 
you know, we're, we're still able to do things. We're still able to function and think through things and readjust and learn things, learn things, right? Like it's, it's beautiful, especially for me. I think flying is therapeutic for me, especially solo traveling. Cause I'm like, I mean, I would love to travel to, you know, groups, group travel, couple travel, whatever it is, but solo travel just is therapeutic because you can actually do a lot, see a lot, connect with people and just go there, do what you got to do and, and build, you know, because if you want to stand out, you have to show up. If you want to stand out, you have to show up. If I tell everyone to stand up, we can all see each other, but no one is standing out. Unless you're wearing something really colorful or you got an umbrella on top of your head, or something is making you stand out. Yeah. But if you really want to stand out, you got to show up. And how do you show up consistently? By showing up contextually, right? You show up consistently by showing up contextually. How do you show up contextually? You show up contextually by adding value to what you're saying within the content pillars of your post. In other words, if you are posting content and you're talking about like I'm doing podcasts, SEO, marketing, right? Those are three big words. Those three can stand on their own, right? But it's a pillar. So this pillar, I'm asking you, what makes you stand out? Because everyone has a podcast. I hear everyone say, yeah, I could do my own SEO. I'm like, you guys make this sound like we're painting walls. You know, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's not like, it's not a cookie cutter thing. You know that, oh, I'm just doing, do my SEO. When I hear that, I cringe because I'm like, it's like saying I brush my teeth once a year. It, it doesn't make any sense. Because you have a website that is operating on a server. You buy a domain, you buy a hosting server, and you buy a mailbox. That's digital real estate, right? If you have an info at or your name at your website.com, your website.com, and you have a hosting, whether GoDaddy or SiteGround or Bluehost, whatever, wherever you go, those places, that's your real estate. I'm currently fighting with, with, with a client's manager, not fighting, but like trying to get through because when she signed up her podcast, the person who signed up her podcast signed up with her email address instead of the owner's email address. So when I'm trying to claim the account on listen notes, it's telling me this person's name is the host um, owner. Could you verify with this email? I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. You don't have ownership rights. And you're paying this person for a service. So I'm now telling her, please tell this person to rename and just go to the settings. It's on Buzzsprout. So I had to like literally dig in to know which, which server is this person using. So I said, okay, tell your, whoever is, whoever did this thing for you, tell them, I even wrote it in text. I said, copy my text and paste it so that you don't have to re repeat what I say. Just copy and paste it. I'm still getting problems because the person is asking why. I'm like, is that a question? Because the person is trying to figure out why do you want to change the email? I'm like, it's not yours, but they will not say that because they know what they're doing. So I'm like, you have two options here. Either this person does it forcefully, which I don't like and has to find a way, or I can get on a call with that person, or you give me login access or something, or you might have to just count your losses and start a new podcast and then grow it from scratch. So those are just like between our hard rock, <laughs> you know, it's like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what do you do, right? These are things that I see. These are horror stories that I hear up. So yeah, clients, great. I learn more from my clients than I than they learn from me because I'm teaching a lot of people. So anyone I'm, I'm learning from, I'm like, oh, that's your industry. That's what's happening. Because I wouldn't know that if I'm not working with you, right? To the point where we even had to wipe out her local citations and recite them back into the algorithms, into the local directories, because she was working with somebody 
and the person she was working with took her business and now she had to create something new out of it. So in the local directories on like yellow pages and other platforms, you would see that person's name. So I was like, who's this person's name? She's like, I don't want to work. How is that person on there? She's like she even got frustrated. I was like, don't worry. We're going to sort it out, but we got to clear this up. Who is this? And so I would do the digging. I would do the auditing. I would do the research. But you will never do these things because, yeah, we're on Google. Yeah, we're on number one. Those things count, but those things don't move the needle. What moves the needle is how rooted are you in the algorithm? How indexed are you in the system? How is your link relevant to this person's search? That's the main goal. If that goal is not achieved, that KPI is vanish. It's vanity. It's just, it's, it's just science. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, let's try it again. Let's, let's prove the formula. Let's reformulate it. Right. You can't, it has to make sense. How do you stand out your articles, your topics, use odd numbers. They're better than even numbers. If you really look at the top articles out there, you're going to see odd numbers. Like pay attention to those things. Like we read, I think psychology just, and people say it too. We consumers scan, they don't read. You scan this product, beep, beep, beep. Like you're literally just scanning your life. <laughs> just scanning products, scanning services, scanning subscriptions, right? But you're not reading the ingredients in the back. You're not, you're not reading, oh, okay, this is how much it costs. Okay, cool. All right, you don't even know whether it has peroxide or whatever synthesis. I don't know. I'm just giving you guys like crazy examples because we're living in a world where <laughs> everything is just like, okay, <laughs> okay, right? But it's not okay because if your website is not online, if you're not seeing anything, if you're not pushing anything, if you're not on the server, if you're not active, don't just be on Google, go to Chamber of Commerce, go to YP, go to Yellow Pages. There's a difference between YP.com and Yellow Pages. Go to Yext, go to Yandex. I'm sure this is sounding like Greek, but these are places you got to be in. <laughs> because if you're not in them, if you have a local business, if you're a business commercial location, your commercial address has a zip code. That zip code has a district. That district has a community. That community is within a city. That city is within a state. So when you really look at the ballpark picture and you ask yourself, who is listening to my podcast? Who is searching for topics that relate to what I talk about? And where are they? When you start to know where they are, then it will make total sense for you to connect with them faster because you don't know what you don't know, right? But what you know will help you to get where you need to be because you're writing content and you're building that content for tenacity purposes, right? You send one email, boom, everybody sees it. They may not respond back to you, but they got it. It's like a message in the bottle. It's until I respond back to you or some type of ripple effect happens, that's when you know that my effect actually had an effect, right? So what makes your show stand out is how you show up, your thumbnails. People forget, I've talked about this in an episode. If you go to my episode about podcast cover arts, where I talked about episode cover arts too, that's a big miss because people don't even use cover arts. I'm using AI images right now with cover arts, right? Because I told you all about Ideogram. And I create literal content there. And I would call out like this title, podcast SEO marketing, what makes your show stand out? And then the AI is going to represent and give me an illustrated image. And that becomes the episode cover art. Guess what? That has spiked the number of downloads because they're not only just getting people's faces, which is great. Whenever it's an interview, it's that person's face, like full profile, because I want you to look at who you're listening to. But because I'm waiting on the cover art, it doesn't make sense for my face to be in every single episode. If it's, you know, so I'm able to make it even more colorful than and bring ideas. When people look at this image, it's like, oh, this is so cool. And the images make you want to just sit on it and just, I'm like, yeah, this is good. I'm going to stay here, right? Because it feels good. And at the same time, it looks good to the eye. So when you're thinking about your colors, your palettes, think about those things. Use coolers.co. Get your color palette. 
get to know what your color palette is because that color palette is either going to make or break your business. The iPhone 16 is out. They have a color palette. Product design team, they had a color palette. Each hex code matters. So when you get that phone, that phone was because of a hex code that came from a product design that was able to give you the number of colors. And based on the number of colors, that's what's going to determine their number of sales because of the interest, because of preference, because of affinity. Like if we go to the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> I'm giving you all some high 30,000 view top, you know, illustrations here. So think about this as your business and ask yourself, where do you fall in? So that would love to hear from you. Okay. So I love this, this subject. And I think it's also important that you're not just attracting people, but attracting the right people. Like a lot of the things that you talk on your podcast are things that I plan on talking more about on my podcast, but I'm trying to attract, like my audience is very different than yours. Like I look at your thumbnail and I think like the, the colors that you use and everything, it's like you, the the purple represents like this deep wisdom and knowledge and the red represents action and the the golden yellow represents like um optimism and enthusiasm and you're attracting people who are like i am ready i am ready to go you know you look at dr fashion down there like you look at her icon and it just is like the black and the again the golden yellow that represents like you know, friendliness, but also like the black is like luxury and class or whatever. And like, she completely represents that where like most of my audience, I'm trying to attract more like people like me who maybe are more anxious and more timid and maybe like take longer to know things. And so I use muted colors to, you know, help them feel safe. I use pink because it's more playful. I use teal because it's you know, represents healing. And so it just, you know, with your palette, it's not just about uh, standing out, but standing out to the right people. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you, Soda. I'm, wow, I did not expect that coming from you because that is so cool that you mentioned. And I mean, I would expect that because you, you, you're a painter, you paint, you, you draw, you, you have a very like creative, expressive, too. And by the way, I can't wait to see my avatar if I'm ever going to have one. Cause yes, I'm... please. <laughs> I, I need to do an episode on uh, uh, zip code marketing. Oh, yes. So the, we should do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's definitely talk about that. It's a big thing. Uh, I've been doing this all year and I'm like, wow, this has actually been something that a lot of businesses just don't see. Zip code marketing, especially with your podcast, too. If I'm listening to your podcast, where are they? I got to realize after doing advertising that people like to listen to podcasts at the park. I would have never guessed that until we did a, an ad run for a client. And then we looked at the actual longitudes and latitudes of the map. And it directed us to a location where there was a lake. And that lake was within a park. And there was a dot there. And I'm sure that dot maybe had a bench. Right. And I was like, whoa. So this is actually happening. So we don't see those things on, on Google or YouTube or, you know, Pinterest. Like you see those things because they're on those three platforms. Like you can't do without Google, YouTube and Pinterest. Right. So if you're outside those three platforms, it's because you came from those platforms to where you are. So if I go straight to the app, then I'm going to end up on a website. Or I'm going to end up on another page that will lead me to where I need to be, right? So if you're going to stand out, one thing you got to think about is emojis. I I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it. Emojis are going to rule because that's what people look out for. It humanizes a brand. If I say good morning, and then I say good morning with, with bacon or with some eggs, waffles, or maybe with a GIF, you know, it's going to have a different effect on how you respond. Right. If I just did good morning, dot, 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 you're going to be like, what are you trying to say? Like, cause it has a completely different connotation, right? So messages matter because of the context. It ha you have to think about the context. So that's really what pulls it through. So I love that you said that to soda. Austin, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you have something to say too? 
Yeah, so the latitude longitude, that's intriguing. It was that from uh Google Analytics doesn't get quite that specific, does it? Or was that from another uh platform? Yeah, we didn't use Google Analytics. We went on another platform. So we did some audience intel insights because when we're running ads, we're running them through like CNN.com, Forbes.com, men's health.com, Daily Mail. Like we're literally putting the 30 second clips of podcast episodes into those iframes. And then those iframes are now telling us where people read the news from. So if somebody's reading the news about something going on in the market, in the business market, health market, real estate market, whatever it is, we're going to run ads to those top sites that have those top reads or top publications or top authors. And then in those places, we're able to now know where within those long longitudes and latitudes based on where they are located, we're able to now take that, copy that, and then paste it into Google Maps, and then we can now get a better accurate response. So we can also see it on the dashboard, but I like to also see it on my Google Maps because I actually want to see the location specifically. And if I have to go into Street View, then I can go into Street View and then know exactly, let's look at the 360 surrounding. So I'm able to do a little bit deeper into that, but we get it from another platform, but not Google Analytics. Wow, super intriguing. Um, you know, I've I've got some colleagues who um, are in a profession where they're licensed, right? Some sometimes like financial advisors or whatever, and so they're usually licensed to a specific state, um, and they have to engage. You know, Soda talked about finding your right audience and not, you know, marketing or serving up content to people where it, it's completely irrelevant. So yeah you know for for retail and another kind of like local specific businesses that seems crazy powerful uh, i'd be happy to learn more about that later yeah definitely um these workshops i'm i'm definitely bringing them on so that we can you know talk more about them because i want to show this to you but i gotta show you in a place where it's safe <laughs> you know so that when you're also in there you feel safe too to take that information, ask questions, you know, bring case studies, use points, and we can really like brainstorm and really get something out of there because it's the results we're looking for. But before we get to those results, we have to pretty much do the testing, the evaluation. You know, we can be guess, we can be guessing every time if we have the stats and we have the data. So definitely we'll talk to you about that, Austin. Liverpool, love to hear from you too. Uh, hi, um, I just have a question actually um so how effective do you think um drip feeding your audience is and can you speak more on this idea of drip feeding your audience um, when it comes to podcasting and things like that when you say drip feeding are you referring to like emails courses things of that nature no, so what I mean by drip oh. feeding is, you know, like, you know how sometimes um, businesses will drop small little bits of information without revealing the whole thing just to get people interested in 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 the whatever product that you're trying to sell. So it could be like ending on a cliffhanger on a tv show etc etc and then revealing like a preview of what's going to happen next so does that kind of make sense Ava? yeah i know what you mean um drip feed it's like creating unlocks you know so like you have to go through course a to go to, i mean module 1.1 to go to 1.2 and then maybe you might drip it for seven days you might drip it for by course or by objective I know what you mean. So that that is something that I mean. Mm, I honestly, for me, I don't like to complicate the system. Let me just say it like that because if you complicate the system, then you're complicating your process. And I don't like to complicate the process because if that means, I mean, if it's a school thing, by all means, yes, you have to do that. If there's some structural alignment to it, but if I'm looking at it from a point of view whereby I'm using this to teach and I want people to learn something as soon as possible, then I will easily 
just open it up and I'll say, hey, check it out because I also don't know what they're coming in as a problem because also when you drip it, let's say you have four or five courses or modules and out of these five modules, they want to learn about the top two, but those two are locked and they have to go through this one. I mean, they'll have to go through it, yes, but you've already created a frustration internally that they may not express to you. But because they're like, man, I got, I paid for this thing and I got to wait. You know, so it's, it's a little bit like on the other side of the fence, but if you give them a disclaimer and you tell them, Hey, this is what you're going to expect. Fine. That's good. I mean, you told them, so that's great for that communication. Right. But if your intention is to let them learn this thing and gatekeep it, if I can call it that up until when it's ready to be released and you're doing, let's say month to month, let's say the whole of September, you're just focusing on this module then October, this module, then it makes sense. But if you're just doing it to just openly give it out, then I would reconsider the formula. So how does that sound? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes much that um, you've spoken that quite well. So yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Soda, how has it been for you podcasting wise? What have you been noticing? And what, I know you talked about the, you know, the emojis and the standing out, how, how has that been playing into the time? Are you able to see anything moving, shifting? Yeah, I have not been very good with being active the last month, but, um, so I've had very few, uh, downloads, but yes, the, the ones that have been downloaded are mostly the ones that I added emojis to. And also, um, like two months ago, I, I think I told you how, because I was in the visual arts category and then I switched to entrepreneurship and that's when I like got my listen note. I got into the 10 top 10 percent thing because I think with uh, entrepreneurs because with art, there's lots of um, podcasts that have art on the, the podcast cover, but with entrepreneurship, there isn't a lot of that and so I feel like having that as my main category and having you know kind of my signature um you know cutesy drawings on the top it's attracted people who are interested in entrepreneurship but also like my people my like kind of um you know <laughs> uh mostly neurodivergence uh <laughs> artsy people so yeah it's it's been it's been good that is good though I'm, I'm happy to hear that because you like you said you want to change those categories it also elevates where your business is and also how much people can see you at a faster stretch because if you're just drowning in a place where nobody's really seeing those things then it can also be a stretch for you because people want to connect with you right but at the same time it's like how do you connect with people if they're not getting the right information and if also they're not feeling like you're you're really talking directly to their problems. And I've noticed something, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this too, Soda Austin or Liverpool. Instead of saying <laughs> it's gonna sound a little different, but instead of saying you want to identify the pain points, wouldn't it be better? to say you want to help or at least get somebody to a pleasure point. I like that. That does seem more pleasing, but you know, you you talked about color psychology a minute ago, which is also a whole another awesome topic that you know, it could be a whole episode, a whole masterclass, right? <clears throat> but, you know, the uh I studied economics and economics touches on this and yeah, people are actually more motivated to avoid pain than they are to seek pleasure. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Why, why though? <laughs> I just thought about it again. Why? Though? It's because they're living in the pain right now and they want to escape it. And like, so it feels more, in the moment and relatable where like the pleasure place whatever like if you're in pain like that feels 
too much abstract and like, oh, maybe that isn't for me. But if you say your pain point, we all have pain points, um, some of us more than others. And like as someone who deals with chronic pain, like that's, I guess, the the thing that comes to my mind, why it might be more. I love that. Okay. Okay. That that definitely makes sense too. I, I see where that can complain to as well. Liverpool. I was just gonna say, I think the simple answer really is that, you know, um human beings are just um hedonists. So most people will just seek out just for pleasure purposes, most more than people put it, make it gives us joy and everything like that. So yeah, most human beings are head in it. So yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah, I think people want to also get out of that, you know, I would say, I'll call it a rut because they just want to feel better. You know, they want to just feel like, okay, this is a better place to be. This is a better, you know, position to be at. So why not? be there and actually get out of that place so that I can actually enjoy the pleasure of showing up online and helping people and doing what I love to do. So I see that definitely it makes, it does make a lot of sense. It plays into the picture and it plays into like the whole idea of what are we doing for, you know, the next people that are coming to play, how are we connecting with them? Why are they even a connection to begin with? You know, if they're a connection, then it means that connection has to build some type of retention. And if you're thinking about your business right now, I think the most important thing for somebody in this industry is their time. Because anything else can take your time. Anything can take your time, right? So how do you project the time that you are in and have the ability to help somebody else achieve that over time by you placing one important factor to them, explaining it throughout the week, explaining it throughout the month, at least letting them know, hey, this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is exactly what I want to do. And if you're the answer to their pleasure point instead of their pain point, then they're not going to think too much about the pain. Because they know that after pain comes, you know, the sunshine, it comes, you know, the joy, you know, now they feel like, okay, this was, was this worth the time? Was it worth the pain? Was it worth the attention? Was it worth all those things? And at some point you want to also ask yourself, okay, where am I going with this? And what is the major goal? And if this goal is going to achieve and take me to the next point in life, then, then we can definitely think about that and do something you know, for that nature. So this is something I think I want all of us to think about as business owners, as leaders, and ask ourselves, like, where do we want to see ourselves, you know, in the future? So we've come to the top of the hour and I wanted to change the link so that you guys can see what I've been planning for you on the back end. I'm excited about this. I'm so excited about this. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So... I have now allowed us to join the second workshop that's going to kick off October 1st. And it's talking about how to create a podcast schedule with SEO in mind. I'm excited about this because this is going to be another 90 minute workshop. Oh my God, this is going to be dope. It's going to be a 90 minute workshop and it's going to be talking about how to submit your part. Like when we talk about a schedule, we want to talk about how do you validate There's something called a, a, an RSS feed validator. Like how do you validate your RSS feed? And everyone who's going to be on this call, on this workshop, we're going to go through everyone's podcast RSS feed, right? And we're going to literally go down into like, we're going to go under the hood all the way to the pixels of your page, your, are you connected? Are you not connected? Are, are you within the servers? Are you paying attention to all those things? Those are major, major things that we're going to talk about in this workshop. So this is going to be a workshop you do not want to miss because I, I'm going to be sharing my screen. You're going to be seeing a lot of informative things and I'll be giving you guys some also insights on how you can make sure that your schedule 
is applied with SEO. Everyone can create a schedule. Everyone can get a notepad. Everybody can jot down, you know, to-do lists. Everyone can do a new year resolution, right? That's, I'm, I'm totally not in there for that. I'm here to take whatever you have and turn whatever you're creating into something that when you're thinking about SEO with your titles, with your podcast, with your show, with your business, with the technical add-on, with your SEO, if you have a website or not, those are things that you're going to end up answering. So October 1st, 9 a.m. Central to 10.30 a.m. Central, we're going to be live on 90 minutes with you. And there are two options. There's a standard and then there's VIP plus coaching. So the standard allows you to get in. You have access to the replay. You have access to of course, the session is going to be a 90 minute session. So you get access to the replay, the notes, you get everything. The VIP now is you get access to all that plus an extra 45 minutes with me one on one so that we can literally take, spend that time together. So 90 minutes is with everybody, but half of that will be spent extra with me one on one. So the link is available now. Click the link up top. Plan ahead. You write when you plan ahead, when you plan. You plan well. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I've learned that from early days, like school days, and that has never left me because, you know, planning is one of the, if you, you plan trips, you know, you plan dates, you plan flights, you plan, you plan everything. If you don't plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It's, it's, it's binary code, <laughs> it's zero and one. So thank you so much for listening and this you guys are hearing this first so you guys are the first to hear this at very very first time i'm actually publicizing this so i wanted to do it specially here in the room so thank you david let's go so i'll probably do the standard because i'll i think i'll work that in i'll need the replay no problem feel free as long as you're there as long as you're hearing what's going on as long as you're seeing my screen those are the things that i want you to see so when you look at those things again november december you now say okay what have i done january through october that or through september because it'll be october 1st and then from there you'll see like you know where that takes you to as well so thank you for that so that i wanted to say hello to you john good afternoon how are you welcome everything's great uh i just left the radio studio and uh we've talked many times about the value for seo and a lot of people don't do that. One of the byproducts of this, uh, I got contacted by one of the largest, world's largest podcast hosting companies. And we have a Zoom meeting on Thursday about switching my podcast to them and creating revenue where they sell advertising on our podcast. Of course, we're going to talk about radio as well, but that is a tool that a lot of people don't look at and say, SEO seems like a lot of work. It is. It can be a lot of work. It's not rocket science. However, it will pay off in the long run if you do it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And you know the good thing about SEO for you too, John. I'm just thinking about this now. Is once those advertisers start coming in, your domain, your URL, your business, the captions, your profile, everything that's retaining to that product or maybe that push, depending on when it was happening, is also going to be a non-branded and a branded query for you that'll also keep you affiliated within those, those affinities. And then later down the line, you can still benefit from those things because they were anchored by text or anchored through audio or even through video. Correct, it's a win-win. So the more the more traffic, the higher you rank in SEO, the higher your domain authority, the more backlinks you have, the more outside locations you write for, the more people are aware of your content. What the payoff is, you get increased discovery and searchability even when you're not working, even when you're not on it, just people searching. That means you make money in your sleep. And when you have an advertiser or a sponsor that's on your website, <clears throat> excuse me, in your show, they're going to get more plays. You earn more and you don't have to work more, but you got to put in the, the initial effort, which can be time consuming. Oh yeah, totally. I agree. I think it's time consuming because people want to put in the work, but they don't know how much work to put in. But I think if they just use that one hour, two hours a day to schedule things and do it correctly, use the right tools, you know, not overpay or, you know, just be paying for subscriptions, it will just help them a long way. So this is exactly what we're going to do. And I'm excited about this because if you have SEO in mind, 
everything you do, you do it cautiously. Just like if you have a child, if you're, you know, you're taking care of someone, even if it's a pet, you care for what the, if you, if you see a stone, if you see a nail, if you see uh, something that's in the way that you can see that they can't see, you're going to get that out of the way because you don't want them to experience that because you know, that could cause them pain. That might turn into insurance that might turn into health. You just don't want those casualties, right? So prevention is better than cure, right? So when you focus on giving people the information they're looking for in a capacity that they can actually connect with you further, then it becomes even easier for them to just, you know, fall right in because now you're actually paying attention to their needs, right? If you take a nail off, you know, an elephant, that elephant is not going to forget you because an elephant has a great memory, right? I think they have one of the greatest memories um, animal wise. So just thinking about those things, right? You, you don't, they don't forget. So if you are paying it forward by paying attention to the context of the messaging within the branding scheme or the brand archetype that you have, then over time, people will start to learn what you do, right? I don't, I can say I do this. I'm a drummer. I, I play music. I, I'm an artist. I do SEO. I'm Pinterest. I sound like I'm all over the place. Like, it sounds like I don't even know what I'm doing, right? But when you're in a room and you're addressing a certain topic, you wear the hat of that topic so that that topic remains in context to the, to, you know, to the condition of the room. So that if you're speaking with people who speak the same jargon, then it's, it's familiar. It's not, it's not like, what are you saying? You know, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's not algebra. It's language, it's communication, it's feeling, it's human to human response, it's feedback, it's loops, you know, those are things to look out for. So if I think if we all stand out the way we should, we should be fine. We should definitely be fine. So this, this has been something I think a lot of people, you know, need to look out for, especially with the marketing piece, because if I break down this word podcast, SEO and marketing, I'll start off with marketing and then come back to podcast because podcast is a product right product is, is that's the product the podcast is a product marketing is where the market is and where is the market the market is where the people are right so you can't sell a product without having people it's impossible like you need to make profit from having a market mix and one of the the p's in market mix is people right yes this place this price is this and that but the people is the focal point. So if you are focusing on the fundamental parts of the message, which allows someone to read text, subscribe text, index text, text, decode it, and then give it back to you, that process has to be done in a quick motion, right? You know how they say money loves speed? You know, websites love speed. That's the same thing you should have as a business, because if someone is reading your, your podcast title, what's going to make them click is how you address that topic. If me and you had, let's say we both had perfect example. When a headline story comes out, right? Whatever the story is, and you look at the way the headlines were titled by each of the publications, the one that you pick. And I want to go around the room to know what your thoughts are on this, because I want to know what you also pick on when you look at the things that interest you. Most times people would pick the title that makes the most sense and feels like it's given the most detail in the most concise format. So I want to ask the room, what are your thoughts on that? And how would you decode that? Anyone? Soda, Austin, Liverpool, John. Well, for me, I, I can just tell you the results I've seen. Uh, when I spend less time in the titles, making it grammatically correct and focus more on searchability, the more the show grows, the more people listen, the, 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 it grows exponentially. The more I focus on, you know, sound like I'm having a, a, a natural conversation in the title, the lesser performs. So for example, when I focus on, I got an episode coming out tomorrow. Uh, and the title, I believe, is Race and Stereotypes, Race and Life Stereotypes Smashed. And that's the title of the episode. There's a little bit more to it than that. 
But when I go in today's episode, we talk with so-and-so, that I can guarantee you will plummet, will drop tremendously. Um, and I found when I do listen to episodes, it's the very first word that I make my decision off of. It's the first three words. Uh, I really don't focus on whether or not it's written right or not, because I'm, I'm not reading a book. I'm listening to a podcast. Mm, I love that. And I think the listening part sometimes for people could be either active or passive. Is there a way you can tell? Maybe just from your experience and just seeing how it is. Of course, you can look at the downloads as a metric, but just the energy and how you feel when, when someone's listening to you or how they respond sonically. First of all, I found that um, trying to focus on whether people listen passively or, or lean in the conversation uh, is a, a futile waste of time and effort they can put elsewhere that produce better results. Uh, I look at the, the amount of downloads. I look at the listen time, the average listen time, make sure that number's not dropping, it's increasing. Uh, and that's what I look at. As a matter of fact, and this is a conversation we have for another day, I don't think in seven, almost eight years, I've ever, ever said, leave a rating and review, ever in my show. Yet there's almost 1,600 reviews or, uh, and uh, five-star rating, about 1,500 ratings, uh, and Apple. So I never talk about it. It's just assume people do it um, and because it's a waste of space. It's a waste of effort. I try not to ask people to do anything. So uh, if people are listening while they're doing the dishes or mowing the lawn or driving the car, it's just as valuable to me as if they're listening and it's all they're paying attention to. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. And I think for someone to even have that in their background alone is enough for them to even, is enough for you to even appreciate that because it could be playing anything. They could, play, they could be playing music. They could be playing a game. They could be playing, you know, something else, but they're playing your your episode. So that is so true because it also plays into where they think about you, how they think about you. And if they're driving and you you come to their mind, they don't have to say, hey, I'm listening to your show, but they're listening to your show and it's counting because the response you're getting back is either through, you know, somebody's responding on LinkedIn or like you said, a review or someone just going out of their way to reach out and maybe showing up in person and telling you at an event, hey, I listen to your podcast and I love you. You don't even know this person, but the person understands and values what you value. So you create that relationship that just goes beyond a sale. So I, I love that. It's it's very emotionally inclined. And it's also very, you know, powerfully aligned, you know, to what somebody's vision is. Because podcasting could be different for everyone. You know, there's a way people can see it too. Yeah. Austin, what are you thinking? I got nothing for you on this one. Okay. Okay. Soda? Um, so for me, like when I'm looking for a podcast, I like to binge one podcast. And so I'll find, I'll look for a podcast. I'll when I, And I look at like all the titles. And I like to see if because some podcasts I'll find them and all the titles seem to be like very similar and that seems boring. Like they're almost like they're talking about the same subject, like the same thing over and over again. And then some of them are just all over the place, like so random that, I, you know, so I like to find ones that have a balance where I like short titles and I like when like the subject is related, but not like, too random or too similar so not sure if that answers the question but that's what came to mind no that makes sense it, it has to fall within a pattern that you like because how you also going to discover those shows episodes and how you also respond to them is how you're experiencing them too because you may not like the way this episode sounds just because it sounds cracky <laughs> it just sounds cracked up but you don't know until you hit that play button and the first few seconds will tell you whether you want to stay or not. So I think it's also the way they welcome you, how it sounds, how it feels. It, this all in the motion. So I love that you're able to say that too. Liverpool? What was the um, question, Faber? Can, do you mind repeating that? So it's technically about like, like when you 
look at your show not like for you exactly because you're you're building yours right what are the things that you can do to make your your own content stand out so that you know if somebody's listening to you actively or passively you can also tell that you're not just wasting their time but you can feel like there's something you're actually sending as far as like a sonic wave okay so i would say number one um i think dodo mentioned it already having it in chronological order i think having it in a sequential order is very very important so it's not like mismatched and everything like that so i think that's very that's number one um i would also say as well making sure that you um because one thing about me as well is um when i'm talking i like to always keep notes and things like that so it doesn't have to be too detailed notes so you kind of know what you're going to actually really talk in one episode what those different talking points are going to be within 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 um one episode so you're not just talking off the cuff because there are some people there are some people and i'm not very good at it i'm not very good at it is winging it i'm definitely not good at winging it so i have to really 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 become quite prepared and so some people can actually really tell when i'm actually just winging um what i'm saying and that can come across and you know uh, do we take what this person is um what this person is saying value and things like that because it's very one thing that is very very important as well is your tone of voice how you come across when you're talking to people so if you come across as somebody who's confident who knows what they're talking about etc etc chances are people are going to listen to you whereas somebody who's a little bit timid and you can kind of tell them they'd be more or less inclined to kind of be um take what you're actually what you're what you're going to say so i think that's very important as well i hope that answered your question Mama. but yeah no thank you for that no i appreciate that response because it's it's intention the intention has to matter like me being here you being here us being here we being here is an intentional move and when intentionally we place things in front of us and we want to achieve them, then we have to, you know, hit those goals. Like last week, I couldn't be on Clubhouse like I'm, I am this week because I was busy flying last week. So I can't be in two places at the same time, but I'm also thinking, hey, I got to show up because you know, I know people here want to listen, their replays on, you know, I feel like it's not, nobody gave me the responsibility, but I feel like I have a human responsibility to show up and serve because I'm doing this actively and I'm helping people create their own, you know, passive and active income streams by applying things that they could do better, you know, and it takes time, but the more they're able to do it, the faster they're able to achieve those goals. So these are some ways that we can also show up and at least analyze some pages too. So I appreciate that feedback to Liverpool. So I don't think anyone has any other questions. Derek, David, Chris, Sackback, Tiago, Ruse, and Najat, thanks for being here. Najat, please click the link at the very top. If you want to be a member of this club, we are growing. We're at 349.5K members. So cash in your ticket at the very top where you see that blue sign. And that way you can be part of the marketing club. We have a lot of content here. So I'll be here again tomorrow. I don't have a topic that I've put on the schedule, but I do have something I'll be talking about tomorrow specifically. It might be around the early morning time. So I'm going to see either morning or afternoon. I'll, I'll definitely schedule it ahead. And I'm going to be focusing on email marketing and specifically not just email marketing, but email marketing and segmentation. That's going to be the key one, because if you can't segment your emails, or you know what you're segmenting, then I don't know. I just don't know. Like if you're not looking at your numbers, if you're not looking at your graphs, if you're not looking at your, you, I don't know what to look at. Like there has to be something for you to look at so you can look back 
and you know look forward to something so this is something that i wanted to just let you know about so we'll be having it at tomorrow on email marketing and segmentation that way you learn how to do that as well so right now if you're thinking about podcast seo marketing click the link above our head and sign up you know join us there are two plans choose the one that you want and because i like to make people make a decision you know choose left or right up or down that way whatever you pick you feel comfortable with your decision and you also feel satisfied with your decision because i want to make every decision count and you matter that's why we're showing up like this consistently so thanks for listening to this show and before we go I know we've covered a lot of things. We've been here since, what, 11 a.m. Central. It's now 12.22 p.m. Central. So I want to start off with you, John. What would you like to tell the room on, you know, how to make their show stand out if there's one thing that they can leave with? And then we'll go around the room all the way to Soda. The, the most important thing I found for me is um, to really focus on the searchability of your content uh, and your titles. Remember that when it comes to titles, the search engine is only indexed about the first 60 characters, including spaces and punctuation. Uh, put your heavy hitting stuff there. Uh, it doesn't have to make sense. And then make sure you repeat that in your first line. Every title is repeated in the first line, repeated about four different times throughout your show notes. More show notes, the better. And your first paragraph really make about what's in the, the episode for the listener. Uh, and focus on the keywords that get searched that apply to that episode. So if you write your titles and your show notes, especially the first paragraph for search engines, you'll do much, much better than writing it for uh, consumers or writing it for what you have to say. Because uh, if they can't see it, they can't find it, they find your competition, they're soaring and you're not. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so true. Liverpool. Well, thank you again, Maybe but it has been a very informative and I've rather enjoyed this um, topic of conversation and lots of nuggets were dropped here. Um, but that's, no, that's what I will say. But um, I would say, because um, as you know, I've not actually, I haven't got a podcast yet, but it's in it's in it's in it's in the process at the moment but one thing that i would probably say would be um relatability would be is very very important i guess that would kind of make somebody really stand out in how people relate to you because a lot of people if you're not really relatable to somebody People are just going to really, really switch off in how you portray yourself, um, whether it's visually or whether it's audio, um, whether it's through audio. Um, it's very, very important because that's one thing that we, um, that's how we kind of, that's how people perceive us. Um, also, I would guess as well, um, staying contemporary as well and looking um relevant as well so talking about contemporary issues and something something that you know something that is very very important to the world because you know what it's very um there's a lot of people that's gone into the podcasting industry and just really um finding out what your niche is again i mentioned this earlier in the room the use of color as well color psychology is very 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 important that can also make you um make somebody stand out when it comes down to the marketing side and also, and I'm kind of glad you didn't really touch upon this, baby, is um, the use of description as well. I can't tell you, because as a reader, how important descriptions are and making sure that, you know, um, it's very difficult to try and, you know, come up with a really, really good description of what your episode is going to be without making making it far long-winded and just interested just enough for that person to be hooked to watch or listen to that episode as well so those are the things that i would actually say so yeah thank you thank you so much for that liverpool i think the answer to that question real quick would be using 
question marks statistics like hitting it home fast you know like really fast to the point where somebody is reading that text they can see it because if that same text this is why this is so important that same text that you put in the description and the descriptive text if there's any podcast directory that your podcast is going to show on wherever it is on the web it's going to be within that same format that you set so if you started off with a word that started off keyworded based on your search even if it ends up on youtube right within the first 40 characters if that word is there and it's a keyword that's matching the phrases that people are searching with then that search or that match query can also fall in line when somebody searches on youtube because it's coming from your podcast if your podcast is on youtube as an rss feed on so when you start creating those buckets you have a website you have apple spotify everywhere you're going and saying the same thing that creates something that nap that name address phone number it has that consistency and that's podcast wise because it allows you to stay connected and hooked because if you just start off an episode and just say this episode is talking about this great but if you start off with a hook that talked about they talked about something that makes somebody stay in great People do that a lot with, you know, videos and hooks. So if there's something in that video that really made sense and it's going to hook the audience, then start off with that and then let people hear that part and then let them start from the beginning or have a cliffhanger and then give it to them a little bit so they can understand where you're taking them. But it's a whole lot of testing. I mean, this could work. This may not work. But if it works, then you work a way that can actually work to your advantage and also work to the client or to the consumer listening so that when they're also connecting with you, whether it's a B2B show or a B2C show, then they can connect with you further that way. So Liverpool, I hope that gave you some clarity. That did. Thank you very much, very well. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Austin? Yeah, thanks for a great room, Favor, and uh, lots of solid info. You know, my takeaway is to you know, find your audience and speak to your audience and listeners. That's one great way to stand out. And, uh, you know, you can do that through search. You know, we are using our devices, how many dozens of searches a day we're each doing. So knowing those search triggers and, uh, and keeping your audience and listeners in mind is a great way to stand out. So thanks for the room. Thank you. Appreciate that. Soda? Uh, earlier, you mentioned thumbnails, and um, yeah, it was a good reminder about you know that kind of brings the the color theory Liverpool was talking about and um, understanding your audience like with Austin and you know just having the the key terms in like the thumbnails that you know will get people interested a little bit of you know the the with the question marks and it was also mentioned so. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say thumbnails is is a great way to kind of stand out and especially if you're consistent with the appropriate colors. Thank you, Soda. Yeah, colors definitely change a lot. Fonts, like styles, like when you look at a page, it has to make you feel cool. And thank you as well, Liverpool and Soda. I saw that um, you love the, the emojis that are bubbling on the screen when you click the link above. Yeah, I like to make it very bubbly very relaxing because it's already stressful enough like seo is really like a daunting experience for some who think that way but it shouldn't be because it's it's all language it's all communication it's all search it's all the things that we do it's just that it's coined in a way that makes it feel like it's hard but if you just get to the root cause or you just get to the formula then you can always alternate and you know modify whatever you need to do within the field of study so Thank you so much for that as well. Thank you, Soda, Austin, Liverpool, John, Derek, David, Sack Black, Tiago, and Kardash. Thank you for joining this room, and I can't wait to have you guys here tomorrow, same time. It might be the same time, but it should be, you know, within the, the good hours of the day. And I'll definitely let you guys know, because I always schedule, and then I put a chat bubble, so that in case you guys see it in your hallway, it makes sense. Before I go, I just remember it. Have you guys noticed? Wait, before I say this, have you updated your Clubhouse app? Has anyone done it yet? 
just you can wave thumbs up give me a, an emoji sign has anyone updated okay if you guys have not updated it please do i think clubhouse is coming back because yesterday i counted i think there were 200 rooms that were live yesterday last night and clubhouse has updated their app so you know how before you had to hit on the sign and then hit on the globe sign and all that stuff is gone so what happens now if you update in the app store if you're on ios go to the app store if you're on android go to the play store and update your app what you first see is when you open the clubhouse app you're going to see the logo at the top of the home page top left now you're going to see two there's going to be a for you tab and you're going to see an explore tab that explore tab has so many rooms i think clubhouse just opened up their pandora's box again <laughs> But I wanted to find out from in, if anyone has seen that. I haven't yet, but I do see I can update the app in the store. So I will check that out later today. Yeah, they're kind of bringing the Wild Wild West back. <laughs> John, have you seen it? John might be busy. Liverpool, have you seen it? Soda, have you seen it? I haven't, but I'll update later today. Okay. All right. I'm just letting you guys know because, yeah, sometimes we don't update our apps all the time. But when it's an, there's an update that's this big, I'll say check it out. And then check the Explore tab. There's so many rooms in there. There's a For You tab and there's the Explore tab. So we see, we'll see what happens on Clubhouse in the, in the next few days. So thanks, everyone. Have a blessed day and enjoy your Taco Tuesday. I'm going to see you guys soon.